Good afternoon. Welcome to Music at Noon. Glad to see you. We have a flute and piano concert today. You probably knew that already. Ooh, it's kind of loud, isn't it? And today, our guests are from the Bay Area. We thank them for traveling the long distance. And the program is what I would say is an all-star list with Bach, Mozart, Poulenc, Vivaldi, Debussy, Sasson. How can you go wrong with that? I always find it interesting when I hear about or hear the music of the Bach boys, one of them being CPE, Carl Philip Emanuel Bach. And um, Mozart said, Bach is the father, we are the children. So Mozart tells us how great the Bach even the Bach boys were. The Bach boys were very great. It's truly amazing because um, Bach's children teased Johann Sebastian, their father, and said, you're old, old wig, you're old style. We don't do that anymore, father. We don't do that. And, and Bach did turn and pivot a little bit toward the end and started doing more of the uh, classical style. But this was before Haydn and before Mozart. So the Bach boys really propelled the music world into the age of elegance and the classical time. And so we are starting off wonderfully with Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach and then the man who says the Bach people, the Bach boys, are our father. Is Mozart following that? Nicely planned. Please welcome Chris Palmer and Varya Millender. Okay. And I can hear us. Thank you for having us. So, we're going to start with this music by Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. 
one of four Bach sons who went on to become composers just like their father. Now, as we play the music, those of you that are really familiar with the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, do see if you can hear differences in how that music sounds, kind of like Baroque, but a little bit different because this is music from about a 20 to 30 year period, let's say only 20 year period, between the end of the Baroque and the beginning of the classical, right in the middle of the 18th century, and this period is called Empfindsamkeit, a long German word that basically means heightened sensitivity. So C.P.E. Bach was trying to create something new to break free of his father's Baroque. Enjoy.
What I find different about his father's music of the Baroque, hi mom. <laughs> the thing I find, find different, C.P.E. Bach and his contemporaries, a few contemporary composers, so Carl von Emanuel Bach, he seems to be trying a technique I call, remember the, the Disney um, uh, cartoon? So he'd be saying something along very nice and all of a sudden he'll go, squirrel! And that's what I hear in his music. And it sounds like the musical equivalent of... And his, his father wouldn't do that. His father would flow seamlessly into one idea, and then you're in another idea, and you, have, you don't remember how you got there. But his father just took you there beautifully. But C.P.E. Bach seems to be consciously trying to go, squirrel! So... So that's the bridge, in Finsamkeit, only for about 20 years, right in the middle of the 18th century. And then that flows into the classical era. So some of the characteristics you just heard there in the Empfindsamkeit of Karl Philipp Emanuel Bach, yes, the classical greats of Mozart, Haydn, and Beethoven, you, we do hear in their music. So we're going to play for you a piece called Andante in C major by the great Wolfgang Mozart. This piece is kind of a standalone piece. He wrote a, a flute concerto for a very wealthy, but not very good, flute player, the flute concerto in G major. So Mozart was commissioned, he was paid to write that piece. So he writes this beautiful flute concerto and he hands it to the commissioner, the wealthy but not very good flutist. And that flutist says, it's lovely, but the second movement's too hard. I can't play it. Can you write me an alternate second movement? And Mozart wrote a lot of letters to his father. And in so many words, in many of his letters, he says, Dad, 
Why is it, and I'm paraphrasing, but why is it that all the people in the world that have the money, they're all incompetent? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Nothing has changed in 250 years. So 250 years ago, same thing. The wealthy patrons that had all the money were not necessarily the best musicians. And these were the people that Mozart had to write for. So he rewrites a second movement. And that's what we're going to play. And thank goodness this not-so-good flutist had to do it. Because although this movement is less complex than the slow movement in Mozart's original G major concerto, it's lovely. So do enjoy.
Isn't that lovely? Mozart. And so where do we go from Mozart? <laughs> he wrote, I don't remember what great rock musician it was that said, well, Mozart, he wrote all the best melodies, so what do we do after that? We're going to jump ahead now. Are we on our program? Vardia, did I take the program? Oh, I did. We're going to jump ahead. Are we jumping ahead to the 20th century, Francis Poulon? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we're going to play um, a piece, uh, a portion of a flute sonata that was commissioned by the great Jean-Pierre Rampal. Now, he was not incompetent. Jean-Pierre Rampal worked together with French flute composer Francis Poulon to create this flute sonata. I want to say it was written in the 1930s. Let's just go with that. So what you've been hearing so far is the wood flute. I like to use my wood flute on music of the 18th century because that's all we have. M flutes in the 18th century were made of wood. Uh, the 1832 World's Fair, boom! Um, a man named Boom introduces the very first metal flute. So here for 20th century music, I'm going to play a flute made out of, we've got silver here and we've got gold here, and we've got a little bit of platinum here. So you get to hear the difference in the, the types of flutes and the materials. So some music from the flute sonata by French composer Francis Poulenc. Enjoy.
love the way he writes for the keyboard in that piece. He was a great keyboard player, pianist, organist, Poulenc? No, I'm confusing him with Olivier Messiaen. It's a great, very fine keyboardist. So Francis Poulenc's music, uh, if you get to hear his music again, listen to the keyboard part, the piano parts. Really lush, beautiful. Now, I think we're stepping back in time next to Antonino Vivaldi, is that correct? So, you get a, I want you to hear some variety of instruments today. You get to hear the piccolo. Now, don't go running. No, not the piccolo. Yeah. This is a slow movement from Vivaldi's piccolo concerto, back from the 18th century Baroque. So now we're back in the Baroque. He was a contemporary of Johann Sebastian Bach, but he's in Italy. And in Baroque music, it was understood that the performer would add to the music that the composer wrote. So what you're gonna hear is one section of lovely melodies, and then you're gonna hear me ornamenting those melodies. And then you'll hear me doing another section of lovely melodies, and then you'll hear me ornamenting those lovely melodies. So listen for those, so you'll hear kind of in four sections, one, two, three, four, and in sections two and four, you'll hear faster moving notes, and those are mine. We had the power to do that in the Baroque. So enjoy music by Vivaldi on the piccolo.
That was kind of cool. We went right from Vivaldi into U2 and Bono, I heard. Yeah. Well, there is a kind of a connection there. Yeah, so we had a lot of power in the Baroque era in the 18th century to add our own little notes. Well, by the 19th century, we're not really allowed to do that as performers. We kind of say, play the ink. The composer tells us what all to do. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, good. We are good with our timing. So I want to play for you a couple of pieces for solo flute. Let's see, where are they here? Oh, there we go. So I think you have next in your program Syrinx by Claude Debussy, correct? Okay, so Syrinx, who knows their Greek mythology? Some of you might know this story better than me. So Syrinx is, she is a character in Greek mythology. Okay, so the thumbnail version is Pan is a demigod. He's half goat and half man, so he's half god, half mortal. And again, this is in Greek mythology, so it doesn't have to make sense. So he's wandering around the countryside like he does, and he sees a nymph. There are nymphs in Greek mythology, and her name is Syrinx, and he falls in love with her immediately. But she does not return the favor. It's kind of like Pepe Le Pew and the little female skunk in Looney Tunes. She's just, no, go away. So to escape from, from Pan, Syrinx turns herself into a tuft of reeds. So reeds, like the cattails in a marsh, they're hollow inside. And you can do that in Greek mythology. When you're a nymph, you can turn yourself into a tuft of reeds in order to hide from Pan. But Pan's too smart. He sees that. He's determined to have her still. He cuts down these reeds, turns them into his pan flute. So the pan flute, that, that great performer in the 70s, Zanfir, you know what I'm talking about? So a pan flute is a series of hollow tubes all stuck together. And that's in Greek mythology, that's what Pan, the, the demigod Pan, plays, this half goat, half man. So he's, he's, he has syrinx. He was determined to have her, and now he has her in the form of these reeds that he cuts down and turns into a pan flute. So Claude Debussy, when he determines to write a piece for solo flute, he titles it, of course, Syrinx. So music by the French Impressionism. Now we're in French Impressionism, 1913. Syrinx by Claude Debussy.
Did it? Oh, good, I brought it. So I'm going to add something. I weren't sure if we had time, so I didn't put this in the program. I want to go back to wood flute. I want to play for you, a, 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 well, I have time for one, but I want to play for you a little bit of Irish Celtic music. So the flute, what, what is a flute? A flute, it's, it's, around, it's worldwide. So you take any hollow tube and you put a tone hole into it either on the side or on the end, and you drill some holes into it and you have a flute. And our earliest flutes date back, oh gosh, I gotta look it up before I do these recitals and tell you, they're, they're a long time ago. It really is the earliest surviving type of musical instrument, a flute. And they're hollowed out animal bones. So after they ate dinner in the cave, this is from the Neolith or Paleolithic, Neolithic era. They would then uh, put a tone hole in a, an animal bone, a couple of holes, and that's their earliest flutes. So again, some flutes, such as Native American flutes, are blown from the end or recorders, Renaissance recorders, that's a type of flute. And some flutes are transverse flutes, where we, the tone holes on the side here, okay. So the flute is a big part of Irish Celtic music. Their flute, a, tr a traditional Irish Celtic flute like this, it's, it's gonna be made of wood. I'm gonna play for you an Irish Celtic tune called The Old Grey Goose. Hope you enjoy a little music from Ireland. It's a tr traditional uh, Irish Celtic melody. A little music there from Ireland. We're going to end with two pieces by birds. About, not that by birds. <laughs> They're by Camille Sanson from his Carnival of the Animals. And these bir both of these pieces are about birds because the flute is never the lion, the tiger, or the bear. The flute is always the bird. We're always the bird. Now, in, when Camille Sanson wrote The Carnival of the Animals, he, it's a children's piece, so he's using all the instruments of the orchestra 
to portray the animals in the zoo. Um, I'm looking at one movement here. It says, persons with long ears, donkeys. He gives that to the violin section. And another movement he titles Fossils. I think he has the, the piano and the string bass doing that. We're going to do the swan and the aviary. Now, the swan was originally written for cello, and it's lovely on cello. But I don't play cello, and we don't have a cellist with us today, sadly. So I'm going to do um, a rendition of the swan on flute, and then we're going to go into the aviary, where all the birds are. Okay. Thank you for having us. Some music by Camille Sanson, the swan, and then the bird aviary.
that was an all-star cast of composers, and you guys are stars in your own right. And thank you for so much variety of flute and of music and period of music and so forth, and some historical um, background as well. And did, did you know, Chris, I'll bet you knew that Saint-Saëns was in San Francisco in what year? I just found out uh, a couple weeks ago, he was in San Francisco in 1915 for the, for the um, Panama uh, Exposition. Exposition. He traveled 5,500 miles to get here, and he was 80 years old. Saint -Saint. I love that connection. In our own neck of the woods. Well, thank you. We hope you come again, have a safe trip home, and uh, please keep up what you're doing because the world needs you very much. Thank you. And just to be sure that the world knows who these performers were, that was Chris Polymer on flute and Varya Millender on piano. Next week, we are going to celebrate fall and toot our horns for you. We have Swing Masters Swing Band. We'll have about 15 people on the stage, and they're going to play your favorite music, and we have a singer to sing with them as well. So let's celebrate fall, which happens on Saturday, which is actually the 22nd, or it's the 23rd. We always think it's the 21st, don't we? But did you know that actually some fall dates occur on the 24th? Did you know that the year is not exactly 365 days long? No? Something got it wrong. Okay. Hope you have a great week. See you next time. Bye-bye.